Today we're having a look at the gradient and direct proportion and what that looks like in a graph. So essentially, if we've got two variables that are directly proportional, what that means is that they're changing at the same rate. So the rate of change of one variable with respect to the other is constant. So what this will look like is a straight line graph that passes through the origin and the equation of this graph uh, looks like y equals mx. So, of course, m, um, the number in front of the x, is the gradient. But when we're talking about direct proportion, we actually write our equation as y equals kx. So k is something that we call the constant of proportionality. Now, it doesn't matter if you write it as y equals mx or y equals kx, but just know that when you're writing it as y equals kx, um, you're using the constant of proportionality. So I just want to take you through an example of how to answer a question relating to direct proportion because um, it's not always going to be clear that we are talking about direct proportion. You need to look for really um, specific language. So language like something's being filled at a constant rate or a certain event is happening at a constant rate. Now quite often these questions will have multiple parts so imp it's important that you're able to give the right information with the right part. So being asked water is poured into an empty tank at a constant rate. It takes three hours to fill the tank with 6,000 litres. So we want to know what is the rate at which the water is poured into the tank. So if it takes three hours to fill the tank with 6,000 litres, um, we, to get that as a rate, we want to know how many litres per hour. So we simply divide the litres um, by the hours, which in this case is 6,000 divided by three, which gives us a rate of 2,000 litres per hour. Okay, so then we're going to be asked to draw the graph of volume V versus time T using T is between zero and three. Now, T is our what we call our independent variable. So time moves on no matter what. Okay, the volume, however, is only going to change with respect to time. So because of that, we know that our T is actually our X value and B is our Y value. So we plot our graph with our T values obviously down the bottom and we've got T values of 0, 1, 2 and 3 and then the appropriate um, volume um, up the side of, on the Y axis. So you know that in one hour um, the, the rate is 2,000, the volume is 2,000 litres um, and at three hours the volume is 6,000 litres. So it's quite actually easy to draw your graph because you know um, when time is zero, uh, the tank is empty. And at three hours, the tank is 6,000 litres. So you simply um, draw a point at um, three 6,000 and you can join that to the origin and that's your graph, your graph drawn. Then we're asked to find the gradient of our graph. Now, of course, the gradient is the rate of change, which we actually found before. It's just using different language. So we know that um, when the volume is 6,000 litres, the time is three hours. So we do 6,000 divided by three, um, and that gives us 2,000. So 2,000 is essentially our M or our K value in our rule. So that leads us to the next part of um, our question, which is finding the rule, a rule for the volume. So V is equal to 2000 T. So we just got it in that form Y equals MX, um, where we know M is 2000. Okay. Um, so then for part D, we're being asked to use the rule to find the volume after 1.5 hours. Now, this is just a matter of substituting um, the values that we've found or sorry, the values that we're given into our rule. So we know V equals 2000 T. We're asked to find the volume after when T is 1.5. So 2000 times 1.5 gives us 3000 litres. And then the second part of that question um, asks us to find the volume. So this time, instead of subbing in a T value, we're going to sub in a V value. So we know that 5,000 is equal to 2,000 uh, multiplied by T. So of course, um, using inverse operations, T is equal to 2,000 over 5,000, which gives us a T value of 2.5. So I think it's really important to finish off your um, questions with 
a sentence because you've been asked the question in a sentence you should really give your answer in a sentence so it's important that you say you give context to your answer so you know that t equals 2.5 but what does that really mean so you would say therefore um it takes two two and a half hours to fill the tank to five thousand liters something along those lines it doesn't have to be drawn out and long um just so you are bringing meaning back to your solution that you've found